I'm Paddy Cosgrave, founder and CEO of Collision. So before this COVID reality uh, struck Canada and of course the world, uh, Collision, this was, this was a really big news, Collision decided to move from the US to Toronto for three years. Can you explain why? Yeah, I think there's at least three good reasons. One is growth, the other is diversity, and the third is it's just a very welcoming city. So first on growth, it's North America's fastest growing tech hub. I mean, there's any number of reports at this point. Um, that wasn't as evident two years ago, three years ago, it was very clear now. Uh, diversity, we run a global event, more than 50% of the population of uh, Toronto, uh, you know, are from elsewhere, elsewhere in the world. Uh, and if you look at all of the studies on welcoming cities in the world, it, you know, I mean, it's unfair to just pick Toronto. Canadians, you know, Canadians are basically afflicted with being known as being overly polite uh, wherever they go in the world. They're like the, the nice North Americans. So I think in all those, those reasons alone made it incredibly attractive. The fourth one is, is just pure talent pool. Uh, Canada itself, not just Toronto, has so many of the world's, you know, has world leading universities, uh, you know, from Waterloo to University of Toronto. There's just every, every, there's tons of great universities and that makes it also very attractive for these tech companies who are coming from Silicon Valley, from Europe, from Asia to Toronto, uh, because it gives them a double reason. They, they come because it's a global event, but they think about staying because it might be a wonderful place to open an office. So what are the main ingredients of a strong tech hub and how do Toronto and other Canadian uh, cities rank internationally in that respect? My view, and this might be disagreeable to some to some people, is uh, government support uh, and people. So what do I mean by government support? Well, I think it means considerable investment in education, the dividend of which uh, gets paid literally 25 years uh, later. Um, and it's not just investing in um, primary and secondary education. It's also ensuring that they're world class universities and then there are world-class uh, research uh, programs. And then that the government itself is underwriting, you know, audacious and crazy R&D that just wouldn't take place internal to um, companies. And if you think of the history of Silicon Valley, you know, it's first and foremost a government-led R&D lab that decades after all this government money started being funneled in, very interesting private companies began to emerge. Related to that, of course, is tech talent. And so you need a locate, you need you need a city, you need a country that isn't just producing local talent. It's also somewhere that is um, livable, that people will move from around the world. And I think over the last four or five years, one of the push factors out of the United States was the environment in the United States with regard to welcoming talent from around the world. It began to shut down, which is very unusual for the United States. And I think the single biggest beneficiary in the world was Canada because Canada said, hey, shucks, just come on over the border to us. We're really nice. Uh, and I think you've seen a huge uh, change uh, over the last uh, number of years. So government support, tech talent. What about um, areas of improvement? What do you think Canada could be doing better? You've been around virtually or, or, or in the real world for the last three years or so. Uh, what can we do better to continue and to uh, attract even more investors going forward? First of all, there's no such thing as Canadian culture. There's many cultures within, within Canada. But if there's to be a common thread, uh, it is that Canadians tend to be very understated. Uh, and Canadian entrepreneurs sometimes tend to be very understated. So, it, you know, if there's one criticism, I think it's just, uh, you know, sometimes just more, po more positivity. Um, you know, politeness and diplomacy gets Canada and Canadians an awful long way around the world. Like you never hear anybody in the world going like, oh, I don't like Canadians, they're really rude. Uh, it doesn't happen. I watched pitching competitions at uh, Collision in 2019 and I saw kind of San Francisco American kind of startups go on stage and be like, we're going to be a unicorn, like literally in the next six months. And then I see these like amazing women, Canadians, go on stage, you know, we're four PhD postdoctoral research students and we have a modest proposal and gee, we hope it all works out. It, it has been going well so far. We're very fortunate. And it's, it's uh, you know, I think um, 
belief, just more belief. You know, there's no, there's no reason to, it's important to be humble, but sometimes it's also important to, uh, you know, to really, um, you know, back yourself that little bit more, I think. So you mentioned Toronto um, is the fastest growing tech hub in, in North America. Um, yeah. why, why is Toronto and by extension Canada so attractive to tech investors specifically? And do you see this continuing? Because of course, things have changed yeah. in the US recently and they're changing constantly around the world. My view personally is that the, at the cutting edge of the economy where the smartest people who are getting paid the highest salaries Uh, in a world where the internet exists, they can increasingly choose to literally live and work from anywhere. And you know, that's very clear. It's not a radical statement, certainly not in 2021. And what you've seen in Europe is a, num a number of cities have really exploded in popularity. Uh, Berlin and Lisbon are probably the two most notable ones um, as of now. And part of the reason is these are spectacular cities to live in. People like to live in great cities. You know, I think uh, Canada is just got great cities, the quality of life is great, the food is great, it's incredibly tolerant. Um, and all of these things add up to make it attractive for very smart people to want to live in these places. I mean, you can go back 100 years, and I'm sorry to go on at length, and you can go back to Europe and you can think about, well, look, really, really smart people gravitated towards Paris or towards Vienna. You know, why? Well, these are actually quite nice cities to live at the time, and they could choose where they wanted to live because they had skills that were in high demand. So they just went to nice places to live, That ended up having a cluster effect uh, and those cities benefited richly for a period of time. And San Francisco, Silicon Valley have been that place for a long time. But I think the city and the kind of the counties have, I would argue, mismanaged, um, mismanaged. Certainly San Francisco has become prohibitively expensive and slightly dysfunctional as a city. And they're losing a lot of talent. And Toronto is a, a net beneficiary. But I'm sure other Canadian cities are as well. I think the opportunity for Canada Uh, is, you know, and I think that's happening already. It's a, it's a, it's a kind of, the, the pro provincial system is great. You know, I think it's multiple cities. You know, I think the effect of Shopify, I think in Ottawa, I know they've opened a big office in, uh, an expanding big office in kind of Toronto. The effect of Shopify becoming the largest global competitor, in my view, to Amazon, being a Canadian company is incredible. And I think it's not just the case that Shopify is, is going to continue to do incredibly well. It's that so many companies are going to be founded by Shopify uh, alumni with deep expertise uh, in, uh, in e-commerce. So I think e-commerce e uh, will, will thrive. At the beginning of this conversation, you mentioned talent as one of the reasons why Collision moved to Canada. Uh, could you explain a little bit more? How would you define, how would you characterize Canadian talent? And also, yeah. there's often a question about, you know, the availability or the, the quantity of talent. We, we have talent, but do we have enough of it? One of the most persuasive, I, I read a report in, 20, in 2018, and at the time, the second highest number of engineers being, being hired by quarter uh, in, in North America was in Toronto. It lagged basically San Francisco, so kind of Bay Area. Uh, and by the time we arrived uh, with Collision, Toronto had become you know, literally the place in North America where more engineering jobs are being created than anywhere else. Um, so, well, what's going to happen after a number of years? You're going to exhaust the pool of kind of, uh, of local talent. And I'm sure the challenge in Canada is ensuring that the, the visa system for bringing, you know, world-class engineers into Canada, uh, you know, is probably under kind of strain. I know it's already brilliant compared to uh, the United, United States of America. How do I characterize the, you know, the talent? You know, it's obviously, I mean, that, that report alone tells you the talent is deep and incredible. You know, these companies don't mess around. They wouldn't be opening up, you know, they wouldn't be opening offices. Shopify wouldn't be hiring as aggressively inside Canada unless the talent was there. So the talent is there. The problem is I'm sure it's beginning to be uh, exhausted, which is great for the, great for engineers. It means they're now commanding incredible salaries. Uh, the challenge for the economy at a macro level is just ensuring more and more talent uh, comes, relevant talent uh, is trained up or brought into the country. So three years in, uh, in Canada, virtually speaking, or for the most part, uh, what have you learned about Canada that you didn't know before coming? Uh, any insights on the tech scene, on the startup scene, uh, perhaps on Canadian you know, business founders? Yeah, share, yeah, share a little bit of your personal experience, because of course, 
you deal with all sorts of, of companies and people uh, in, in your business, basically. What have I learned? I, public transport actually works. I shouldn't beat up on the USA, but like public transport in California is, is, is some type of joke. I've had a wonderful experience. I mean, the first time I stayed in a, in a, in, in a hotel in Toronto, I went down in the morning to the gym. There was this big, huge guy stretching on the ground with his back turned to me. And I was like, geez, this guy is like, this guy looks like an athlete. And then I was down on the floor stretching. And then he stood up and kind of in front of me and kind of kind of just waved at me. And I was like, wow, that's Milos Raonic. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. And he couldn't be a nicer guy. He was just so lovely. And I was, and I kind of told him what we were doing. He's like, oh yeah, that's so amazing. You know, you're so welcome to Canada. Let me know if I can do anything. And like, you know, if Milos Raonic is doing that, uh, it speaks volumes, I think, for the, you know, for the country as a whole. I, like I've had nothing but a, but a positive experience. We have an, we have an office in Toronto. Uh, and I think, you know, countries and cities have their moments in the sun at different times. And clearly, I mean, this isn't my view. You can just read the reports. Something's happening in Canada, not just in Toronto, but, but also very clearly in Toronto. Uh, and the challenge for the city, the challenge for the province of Ontario and the challenge for the federal government is how do you maintain that? Because truth be told, many cities have had their moment in the sun and they've, they've kind of wasted it. Um, or they've eventually fell into disrepair. You don't have to go far from Toronto, you go down to Detroit and it's, you know, it's coming back now, but it was effectively a bit of a wasteland for several, uh, for several decades. So, you know, Canada's got its moment in the sun, I would say, and uh, the big challenge for policymakers and for the startup community, and the tech community, business community is um, how do we manage the, the opportunity that has um, befallen us. And remind me the date of collision this year? It's the, 20th to 22nd uh, of, uh, of April. What will make this collision different than, than the previous one? The software makes the experience. The software that we've built from the start is focused on networking. Look, the speakers are, the speakers speak for themselves. We've never had a better lineup of speakers for any event uh, that we've ever run. Who are you most excited about? Uh, well, I'm, obviously I'm totally biased and I'm not gonna say a tech person because somebody will complain to me that I'm picking favorites. So I can say Ryan Reynolds because I love kind of you know marvel and kind of superhero movies 